Welcome back to the channel, Guardians. With the season winding down, I've decided to keep the content schedule to one video a week until Season 21, starting with the review of the Seasonal Fusion Rifle that dropped with Season 20, the Royal Executioner. We'll check its god rolls for both PvE and PvP, and find out whether it is usable in higher content. Blood, sweat and tears go into the making of my videos, so if you do find this useful at all at any stage, drop me a like. Let's begin. So, the Royal Executioner is a solar adaptive frame fusion rifle, craftable at the Enclave on Mars with a base magazine of 6. Adaptive frames are the middle tier in terms of damage, and in general, not that great. Luckily this fusion has some decent perk combinations that make it stand out from other fusion rifles in the sub archetype, in PvE at least. And certain perks synergize with the solar subclasses, allowing to build into Scorch or Ignition setups. In PvP, TLDR, it's mediocre at best and inconsistent, more of that later in the video. As for PvE, there are two roles that are quite strong, one is built for ignition builds, the other for mob clearing. This weapon lacks DPS perks, therefore if you think you're going to melt a boss with it, you're better off using a rapid fire frame. The base role that you want to go for is the following. In the first column, Arrowhead Break will keep the recoil of the weapon in check, making it easier to land full bursts on targets, especially the tankier type. Whilst this weapon has a mid-charge time, slotting accelerated coils in the second column will give it a faster charge time at the expense of a bit of impact, allowing to fire faster bursts. The third column has two good options, Threat Detector, which increases the stability and reload whilst in proximity of combatants, which is very useful for ad heavy encounters. But for me, the third column winner is Envious Assassin, which on getting multi-kills with other weapons, it overflows the magazine by 150%. In the case of the Executioner, it will max out at 15 bursts. When using this perk, it effectively eliminates the need to reload. For the final column, you have two options here. The first, and the one I would suggest is more for mob clearing, is Reservoir Burst. Paired with Envious Assassin, the weapon will have multiple Reservoir Bursts, allowing every burst fired from the top of the mag all the way down to 6, capable of proccing the Reservoir perk. It's nasty for ad clearing, but nothing else really. I found it to perform poorly in endgame content, despite the bonus damage that Reservoir Burst provides, it's much better suited for lower end content. For this reason, my main pick is Incandescent. Why? Each of the 7 bolts can proc Incandescent, meaning firing a burst at a group of enemies has the potential to ignite combatants nearby, making it not only an insane ad clearer, but an ignition build option for solar subclasses. As long as you're proccing Envious Assassin, you won't have to worry about reloading either. As mentioned, solar subclasses can benefit the most from this weapon. Slotting Ember of Ashes will make your Incandescent Scorches to apply more stacks, whilst the Rupture will increase your area of effect on Ignition, giving you the tool for Ignition builds. Even though the weapon sounds cool in theory, in practice, it's poor. It's outgunned the other sub archetypes, in particular, Rapid Fire Frames. Take Iterative Loop or a Cartesian Coordinate as examples, they deal more damage over time, and good perks for DPS too. Royal Executioner struggles in harder content, so you don't want to take this into a GM for a spin. That's the PvE section out of the way. Still with me? Great. Before we hit the PvP section of this video, drop a like for that algorithm and subscribe for future content. We are so close to making partner. In PvP, TLDR, the weapon is... lackluster? I don't know, peeps. It seems very inconsistent. Having figured out the PvP god roll, upon checking D2 Gunsmith, the damage falloff starts at 17 meters. When you consider that a god roll iterative loop can map at 16.5 meters, for a frame that fires slower, that is poor. This fusion rifle, even with max range, does not feel great at all. You are going to look for the following roll, a range masterwork, small bore which grants range and stability, alongside projection fuse to help achieve the 17 meter drop off. Now, this fusion cannot roll under pressure or kickstart, however, in the third column, firmly planted can be slotted, which makes the weapon more stable when crouched, which also procs when sliding. Finally, you have the choice of successful warm-up, which in my opinion is pointless on this weapon, as the buff doesn't last very long, and with the special ammo economy only allowing one burst per brick, ammo will be scarce. Instead, you can opt for elemental capacitor, which is best suited for void subclasses to make this weapon hella stable. I don't know peeps, I was excited to craft this, but it feels very luckluster in endgame content and PvP as well, plus it's outclassed by other weapons, such as the loop. It receives a 3 out of 5 on the alchemist scale due to this, however, in low end content, it is kind of fun, especially the envious reservoir roll. On a side note, I'm having an absolute blast in PvP this week thanks to the matchmaking changes. How is it feeling for you? Let me know in the comments section. That's it for this video, I'm off on holiday for a few days, so the next video may get delayed. Only two more videos are in the pipeline, one being a complete review of the Vex Calibre Exotic, and finally, the Volta Bracket Legendary Sniper Rifle. If any major news drops in between, expect bonus content. Please leave a like and sub if you enjoyed the video. 
This was Plasma Alchemist. Your viewership is much appreciated. Until next time, see you later. Fight forever, Guardian!